Do you feel like you were the outcast in your community and want to take a path different than everyone else? Do you wish you were surrounded by more people with similar interests to you? Have there been moments when you felt lonely, unsure if you would ever find people with a similar mindset? I promise you that many people have gone through this in the past, including your boy. Now imagine a day when you're surrounded by people with similar mindsets and interests. As you best believe, that day will come. Today, I want to dive into how we can be proactive and start surrounding ourselves with that winning team that inspires us to be great. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's the Bearded Man Podcast with your favorite, the world's favorite bearded man, Bob Bay. Each week on these solo podcasts, I try to share some insights on topics to help you become the best version of yourself. Do I have all the answers? Absolutely not. This is just my beard of wisdom, and I hope it brings value to you. So a few weeks ago, I received a DM from Sophia, a listener of this podcast. Shout out to you, Sophia. She told me that she was struggling to find a community of people with similar interests as her. And some context to Sophia, she lives in Silicon Valley and is surrounded by the tech world. She's really interested in photography and the music industry. And she feels completely alone because her interests don't necessarily fit the mold of the people that she is surrounded by. And her question to me was, what is your advice on dealing with not being surrounded by like-minded slash supportive people? So let's dive into it today. Buckle up. It's going to be a good ride. And let me remind you, beautiful folks, as I'm dropping some beard of wisdom throughout this podcast, if I make you smile, if I make you laugh, if you enjoy this podcast at any moment in time, all that I ask, please screenshot this episode Post it to your IG story. Tag me at Bob Bay. That's B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Share out the podcast on your IG story and tell the world what you are enjoying about this episode. It helps us organically grow this project to the tippity top. So please, please, please do that if you enjoy the podcast at any moment in time. Thank you so much. Building a winning community. Building a winning community is crucial because it's going to keep us constantly inspired and will be that group of people that we can go to when we need advice, feedback, or inspiration. Looking back, I was very, very fortunate to have met a lot of young creatives in my hometown of Chicopee, Massachusetts, because they ultimately gave me the green light to enter the podcast space in 2016. I was surrounded by aspiring recording artists, clothing designers, music producers, photographers, filmmakers, models, dancers, entrepreneurs, etc. They were all young in their career, but they were taking daily forward steps towards these interests and towards these ideas. And the common theme among these people that I saw was that they were all passionate. And that energy to me was so contagious. There was no question if they were going to succeed. It was just a matter of how and when. And without seeing the growth of these individuals in real time, I don't think I would have had the confidence to take the leap to launch a podcast. To me, they were the example of how to go from having an idea to then executing on it. As the years have gone by, one relationship leads to the next, one podcast opens the door for another one, and I honestly pinch myself just thinking about all the incredible passionate people that I'm directly surrounded by today or that are just one degree away from me. Now, that's not a flex. This is just a prime example that if I can do it, so can any of you. It's taken reps and patience to get to this point, but let the the bearded man be proof of concept. All this to say, I have personally seen how having the right community around us will be the fuel to the fire inside when we need it the most and will help us get to that next level in our careers and our lives. So steps for building that winning community. Number one, throw yourself out there. Let's use Sophia's story as an example today. I'm sure many of you get sick and tired of hearing me talk about the bearded man. Am I right or am I right? If I'm in Sophia's shoes and I'm interested in photography and the music industry, I'm doing one of two things. First, I'm looking to see if there are any photography or music industry meetups nearby in Silicon Valley 
We are very, very close to some sense of normalcy with events happening again. I think we're starting to see a lot of COVID restrictions get uplifted. So I think it's okay to talk about this now and, you know, push people to get out there and and, and throw yourself out there and uh, in real life in person. Uh, so fingers crossed that we're going to continue moving in, the, in that right direction. But if I'm going, if I'm doing this, if so, I'm attending them and I'm walking up to every single person and in introducing myself at these meetups. I'm saying, hey. My name is Bob A. I'm the guy with the beard who thinks he's some hot shit, and I run a podcast, Who Are You? Secondly, I'm looking for the top leaders of photography and the music industry of Silicon Valley, and I'm reaching out to them directly to see how can I get involved with what they do. I'll slide into their DMs, I'll send them a cold email, or I'll find out where their office is and knock on that door. My goal is pretty much to grab their attention and say, hey, I have similar interests as you, I'm inspired by you, and I want to observe and learn from the best in the area, aka you. The mindset that I would have towards both approaches, whether it's the meetup or reaching out to the leader of you know this city, is that I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. I'm throwing myself out there and will continue to do so until something clicks. That's the mindset to have. Today, I've built an incredible winning community that I am oh so grateful to be surrounded by. But trust me when I say this, the work never stops. There's always gonna be more people to meet. Until this day, I continue to throw myself out there and introduce introduce myself to people that interest me. It's a balance of complimenting slash acknowledging them, asking them questions, and really just listening. From there, it's having patience with these relationships and letting them grow, which I talked into depth uh, about in episode 79 for Genuine Networking. And I think both looking for meetups and looking for the leaders in the city uh, can be applied to any interests of any industry, right? It's not just limited to photography slash music industry. It can literally be anything. So to me, the first step for building that winning community is throwing yourself out there. Hype yourself up and remind yourself, I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Hit the local meetup, slide through the DMs, and send it. Step one, throw yourself out there. Number two, reps on reps on reps. It could be a song, but it's not. I know when most of you hear that word, rep, you immediately think I'm talking about working out probably, right? Although I'm all for getting gains in the gym, that is not where my head at. It, my head is at for this. Reps on reps on reps is a reminder that it's going to take more than just one DM, one meetup, or one email. It's this continuous work in progress for us to build this amazing winning community around us, right? It is a constant work in progress, and we need to continue to be unattached to some expected deadline that we make up and instead just go with the flow, The moment we attach, well, you know, I need to have five new friends by the end of next week. Otherwise, I failed. Well, we're setting ourselves up for, you probably guessed it, failure, right? We can only control the controllables. So instead of setting goals such as, you know, next week, I'm good, you know, don't attach like, oh, I need to make five friends next week. Set goals that are more realistic that we can control. Similarly, like next week, I'm going to attend two meetups and I'm going to be open to what might come of it, right? You may have 10 new friends by that event. You may have none. What truthfully matters is that you stepped up to the plate and you swung the bat, which is the work. That, that's the work in of itself. And that is where the progress will come in the long run. And as long as you continue to do so over and over and over, at some point, it is going to click, right? If I had a dollar for every DM, email, text that I never got a reply from, that I got ghosted, I would be loaded. I might even be a millionaire at this point. But has the no response stopped me from putting in the reps? Absolutely not. If anything, it's only giving me the green light to keep doing it because I want to show the world who they sleeping on, aka the bearded man, baby. I keep going and I keep sending them because that's what I can control, right? So the second step, no matter how well or bad things may feel, 
Keep putting in the reps. The progress will inevitably come. There's no question about it. You know how I know? Because I've seen it in my own life. I'm here to report back that consistency will lead to results. So please do not lose hope and keep going. Number three, create the opportunity bus. I was very unaware of this opportunity bus analogy until I did a recent podcast with Steve O'Dell for episode 86. And uh, essentially, he talked about the benefit of living in an environment where the opportunity bus comes constant. So for example, if you're interested in creative, the opportunity bus comes constant in Los Angeles. If you're interested in tech, the opportunity bus comes constant in Silicon Valley. If you're interested in healthcare, the opportunity bus comes constant in Boston. If you're interested in finance, the opportunity bus comes constant in New York. In Sophia's case, although maybe she may not be where the opportunity bus comes constant, she can build her own opportunity bus and drive the damn thing. Whether it's creating an event in Silicon Valley or hosting maybe like an online meetup, she can realistically create opportunities for herself. Now, is it easy to do? Not necessarily. Will it be a lot of work? There's only one way to find out. I can't promise how this would be beneficial, but I can guarantee that something good will come from it. So let's also take a second to acknowledge that we can build some really strong relationships through the internet. Even if Sophia decided to host something online and zero people from Silicon Valley joined, but 100 people from the internet did, that's a step in the right direction, right? I have built some incredible internet relationships with people that I podcasted with through Zoom. And although we've never formally met in person, it was it was and is a step in the right direction. Because then by the time that I have had a chance to meet them in person, I feel like we've known each other for years because of the internet. We're able to keep in touch. We're able to, we're able to see what people are doing from afar through social media. I know that everything about them and I know everything that they're up to because of the internet. So ultimately, if the opportunity bus isn't coming, build it. Think about ways in which you can create value and that would attract others to want to be part of it. Because I guarantee you there's someone out there that is looking for these opportunities that you could potentially create for them. And there you become the leader and you start attracting people with similar interests and similar mindsets. And if that doesn't work out, reach out to the people on the internet that inspire you and tell them. People appreciate the acknowledgement, and, and you never know how that combo, what it could lead to just through the internet. So step three, create the opportunity bus. To recap, if you feel like you are not surrounded by people with similar mindsets or interests, know that you are not the only one. Speaking from experience, you can and will find these people in time. So know that it's going to happen. Steps for building a winning community around you. Number one, throw yourself out there. Attend a local meetup, slide through someone's DM, or send a cold email. It is not easy to do, but the mindset should be you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, so be aggressive and go for it. Number two, reps on reps on reps. This is a reminder that it is going to take more than one DM, more than one meetup or email for us to build that amazing winning community around us. It is a constant work in progress and we need to be unattached to some expected deadline that we make and instead just go with the flow and trust that it will fall into place with time. Number three, create the opportunity bus. If we don't feel like enough opportunities are coming inbound to us, Create the opportunity bus and invite people to tag along. It is only going to help you build that winning community by surrounding yourself with similar mindset people. Challenge for the listeners, that is you. Which of these three steps do you need to put more effort into? Throw yourself out there, reps on reps on reps, or create the opportunity bus. Be honest with yourself and start putting effort into it today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not six months from now, today. Trust me, it will pay off in time. So do not give up. Questions from the BMC. That is the Bearded Man community. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now officially a member of the Bearded Man community. Costs you $0. It's free. All are welcome 
Thank you for joining the club community. <laughs> uh, just We have a couple questions. Uh, first off, Josiah, how would you approach people that are in a quote-unquote level above you, meaning money, success, etc.? Don't overthink it. Treat it like it is anyone else. Slide through their DM, send the cold email, or approach them in person and just introduce yourself when you are when you have the chance. Plant the seed with them and just let it grow naturally. The toughest but most honest realization that I've had with building a winning community around me, it takes time and I can't force it. So just remember, they are just like you. We're all human beings. Regardless if they're above you, below you, to the side of you, it does not matter. Don't let that has hold you back from actually taking that first step forward to reach out to them. Taylor asks, what do you want out of your community? It's a great question. To be honest, nothing except to be inspired. I want to be surrounded by open-minded people that want to win within their own individual lives. I want to be surrounded by people that push the envelope and try to do the unthinkable because that energy and that mindset is contagious and inspires me to keep going. So I don't, I don't expect anything out of the community that I'm surrounded by other than I just want to be around movers and shakers that are passionate about what they do and you know seeing them chase after that thing just fuels the fire inside me to keep going. Thomas asked, how do you build others up in your existing circle to the next level? It's a great question. Uh, to me, by asking them, how can you help them? By encouraging them every step of the way along their journey or by reaching out and checking in with them when you feel it's necessary. There's a great quote, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. In which I'm, I'm what I'm trying to say, you can only do so much to help build others up. And at some point, it is on them to make things happen. So in my opinion, best case scenario, be their number one supporter and they will greatly, greatly appreciate it. Lastly is from Job, how to surround yourself with such people when you move to a new city. Do exactly as we talked about today, Job. In that new city, look for meetups and the leaders of whatever your interest may be. Go to the meetups and introduce yourself to every single person and try to have a meaningful conversation with them. Find out who the leaders are and reach out to them and see if there's a way to get your foot in the door with them. Look at a new city as a challenge, as this mini adventure, right? 12 months from now, after you've been consistently putting in the work and trying to build out that community, you're going to be able to look back and, and pinch yourself at all the great people that you've met because you stepped up to the plate and you threw yourself out there. So the best thing to do in this moment today is just start throwing yourself out there and enjoy the ride of it. Pod review of the week. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a good one this week, ladies and gentlemen. Pod review of the week is coming in from Doug McQuaid. Shout out to you, Doug. Uh, the subject of the review is get fired up to succeed with Bob Bay exclamation point. Let's go. You give it five out of five stars. Love that. The review is Bobby gives great advice on his solo pods and each interview has some great takeaways. Hearing how other people did it offers great insight and uh, excuse me, great insight on how listeners can get started on going after what they want. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, Doug. I'm trying to fuel the fire inside you, my brother, whether it's these solo pods of me just rambling with some beard of wisdom or it's the stories of the guests that I bring onto the show. That's what it's all about, my friend. Thank you, Doug, for taking the time to leave this review. If you want to be the review of the week for next week, head over to the iTunes podcast app and leave us a review. We're at 61 reviews. We're shooting for 100 by episode 100, which is in seven episodes. So uh, we're going to have to crank up the heat a little bit. I'm going to have to start sending some texts to people and say, yo, go leave me a review. I need it. But uh, shout out to you, Doug, for, uh, for leaving that review. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 93, The Winning Community. Surround yourself with people that inspire you to be great. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it was valuable. If there's a subject or topic you would like me to cover, please do not hesitate to reach out and slide through my DM and let me know what topic you'd like to hear next. It's exactly how this podcast came to life, so shout out to Sophia. I hope this, this episode is somewhat valuable for uh, kind of the situation that she's in. If you guys and gals enjoyed this podcast, please, please, please screenshot this episode right now on whatever platform you're listening to. 
Throw it on the IG story. Tag your boy. That's at Bob A. B-O, three Bs, four A's and a Y. And let me know what was the biggest takeaway of the episode. Just give me one word, one sentence. I'll take whatever you can give me. But share it out with your IG fam and uh, let us know what you enjoyed most about this episode. Thank you guys and gals for taking the time to listen to this podcast. It is oh so appreciated. You could be listening to a million other podcasts right now. But the fact you're tuned in with the Bearded Man gets me fired up. A lot more content on the way. Have a great rest of your day. It's the Bearded Man Podcast. See ya.